Greetings and welcome. That's my old tricycle from 2017. I decommissioned that thing because of its poor quality wheels and the fact that I don't like it anymore. But every day while coming home from my stupid day job, because we are in my car garbage right now, I'm like, geez, I have to build a better version. Well, actually, I already did that with my tricycle number 12 in 2018. But that thing is even worse, that's with its full suspension. It's just too heavy. So now in 2025, I will finally create a worthy successor. Well, time goes by, that new tricycle will be number 24 already. Anyway, let's start. First building that front steering wheel fork, which is also the propulsion unit with the pedals. For that I repurposed the back end of an BMX. Funny, I've used the front part of that BMX to build my bicycle tank number 16, some time ago. I, li I like those real BMX bikes a lot. They have a strong frame and rigid wheels to work with. Back to the topic. Yeah, figuring out what to do, what to take, where to cut. Once again I started to build while it was still freezing cold outside. That's the reason my gloves are illuminated. Well, they are heated with some batteries, of course. What else could it be? Beside my vision in my head, a round aerodynamic form, I drew a rough construction plan too. Here it is. As you can see for yourself, it isn't a complete record of everything I did. There are some minor jumps between those stages of construction. Well, I tried, but sometimes I'm not in the mood. What's well, just two steps forward and three backwards, so no progress to speak of or to show. Here also a mark for the orientation of the path, so I can find back later easily the top side. Looks promising. Fixed in place. Here creating a template for the missing link part that will do the trick. Man, that chisels chisels like wild. Okay, now the task to find the perfect material. It needs to be just right. Not too thick, but also not too weak. Or it could fail. Just like that and after some spot welding to keep everything in place, I'm already in the middle of aligning that front fork, till I'm happy with its overall direction. Well, with stick welding it's hard to close large gaps between parts. It's just convenient to just add some additional material. With stick welding I'm always certain that the connection will work out. But thin materials are always a pain. So I'm switching to that metal cord welding method now. A method without any additional protective gases. It's all inside the wire. Again, some alignment. After all, I wanted to become a straight as I'm able to do it. Here's quite some crucial phase, determining the lowness of the frame, how low do I want it to be. After that's decided, I need some material for the next step of construction. Hmm, the lowness of the frame, let's have a look on the old model, to receive some guidance. That answered, it's time to build that back end with its mount of the back wheels. But where to find those hub mounting brackets? Aha, found ya!
So let's see, what we mounted. Yeah. Still not finished, while the seat is already becoming impatient. Like my mood too. Anyway, here you can observe my smooth workshop floor. It's a complete mess and more like some mountain range. 3 cm. 5 cm. 9 cm. Yeah, life's difficult. But I think before I put that seat in, I put in some steering grips first. Sadly, it isn't plug and play. That BMX steam tube thingy is just too small for that normal bicycle head tube. Lucky me, I can simply squeeze that little pipe inside a fitting bigger pipe. The little hole at the top of the outside pipe is for welding later on. The gods are simply against me. Now that stupid cap bolt wouldn't fit. Well of course I can fix that with a lathe. But how to even chuck that in there? Hmm. Whatever. Firstly we need power. Build something like adapter out of some washers, a bolt and a nut. I just don't know what went wrong. Back on track and just like that after I don't know, two hours maybe? I finally accomplished that simple task of, of installing some stupid handlebars on that thing. Took me long enough. Everything is roughly in place and leveled. So it's finally time for the seat. Got two of these, for free. The guy just wanted them to be gone. The car they belonged to was uh, VW Caprio, I think. Well, an older, an older model, of course. So that seat is pretty much like, without any unnecessary electrical stuff for them. But still, there are some things I can remove to make it even lighter. Because that seat is designed for cars and not for a velomobile, I have to shorten that seat surface. You see, while pedaling, that long surface will become a real pain if you hit it frequently with your upper leg, uh, your spikes. Also, it's reducing of that weight. So, some material has to go. Yeah, while being busy with that cutting procedure, I simply overlooked something. In that square tube of the seat frame, there's a spring inside, on both sides. Those two springs were a return mechanism for the seat adjustment function. I was well aware of that seat function, very keen on it, because it would allow me to adjust the seat position, even if I had fixed it solid to the tricycle frame. But I had no idea about the location of those springs. I managed to continue with the now shortened springs and still ended up with a functional system. With the finished seat frame there's still the seat cushion that needs some love too. Sparks and foam, just great. But that steel in there is some kind of spring steel, so yeah, the angle grinder the best choice for that. The frame, the cushion and finally the seat cover as well. So after all those steps I can finally take a seat that will tell me if it's comfortable or not. The seat adjustment still works great, but already found a new issue. Took the measurements from for that square tube from the origin, original seat, so it's too long now. Almost fixed. Here already cutting mounting brackets for the seat, for mounting it to the frame. Because it's just nice if I can simply unscrew the seat later from the vehicle if needed. And just like that, it's test driving time already. Oh man, I'm so thrilled to do that. <laughs> oh, oh, this geht kaputt. This geht, but das no, geht nicht. Oh, wait, geht. what's that? The frame is carving in like crazy. If I put my weight on the seat. Oh, see, the bare frame can't resist those forces yet. 
So, a temporary square tube should fix it for now. I'm really pleased and speechless. Twice <laughs> like a charm. Yeah. So next up, I have to make that round bodywork of the vehicle's body. For the sake of that project, I did a big investment this time. A new old profile bending machine for just 2000 euros. A real bargain. With the passenger seat removed from my stupid little car, I was able to haul that thing to my home place on myself. Very close by, just 400 kilometers on the motorway. Almost 5 hours, one single drive. That thing is kind of magic, just like that. Wait a moment, didn't you build yourself such a banning machine once already? Yourself? Yeah, you're right. I did, around 2020. But that thing was just a bad joke. Also, after those years, it wasn't operational anymore. Some machines and tools you simply have to obtain yourself. You can't build them yourself, but I can't. I mean, I want to build vehicles and no stupid tools. Hmm, this just looks great. Just a perfect bent round piece of steel. Well, deciding on the lowness of the bodywork now. And another one. I guess this goes without saying. Watch those hands and fingers of yours. Because that machine could cut off these with ease. The round form is good, but I don't need that channel iron for everything. Because that metal beam will be mounted near the outside, where I only need an angle iron one. So simply cutting off one side of the metal beam. Yeah, it took ages to do so. Everything is in place. Everything looks great. Now the welding from the bottom side as well. Thick metal, thick metal with the stick welding method. Thin stuff like all those bended profiles with the metal cord welding method. Well, the older I get, the more I care about my health. So why should I breathe in those poisonous gases if I can protect myself at least a little bit? Also, a welding blanket out of leather is also a fine investment, which everyone should have. So with everything welded together, probably there's still this section right here that looks unfinished. A cap would be sufficient, but it wouldn't be that much of a game changer in terms of stability improvement. So a piece of T-iron will be great, I think. Because I'm finally finished with all the main welding, I mean welding always means a lot of heat, which can melt away all the grease out of your wearings. But now, because I'm finished, I can re-grease and check all of those, finally. Brake cleaner is just great for cleaning your dirty parts. While working on the crank set, I noticed that it's bent. Quite a lot. Luckily, I had a new old part I could use as exchange. I reassembled the front axle again and could finally test drive this thing for real, well around the garden. Hmm, that's great. My vision becomes more and more real. But still, with all that round forms, what will I use to cover it up? It needs to be something that's flexible and could follow those round forms of the bodywork. What could it be? 